hey everyone welcome back to our channel if you're new here please subscribe i'd really love that if you're returning how you doing we're going to be talking about something a little bit serious here okay um the world is watching the world is watching the collapse of an entire nation and i'm talking about haiti in real time and many of us are wondering what will happen to the Haitian people in the process. Many Haitians are now fleeing to the United States, bringing with them things, items, that will contribute further to the destabilization and the chaos already taking place here on our own soil. And many of us have grown, we've grown numb, we have, to such displays of civil breakdown, watching it from far away on our phones, computers, and televisions. And our assumptions is that the, the type of horrors currently unfolding in Haiti could never happen here. But that assumption is wrong. You see, I live in Florida. If you don't, you know, if you're new here and you don't know, I live in Florida. I live in the Tampa Bay area. And it's close to home for me. And I'm watching it unfold right in front of my eyes uh, because they are coming here. You know, all of our beaches are being um, watched, okay, because they're coming here on their boats. And the sheriff's offices are being overwhelmed and the county jails are filling up, okay. And whether people want to acknowledge it or not, the U.S. is in the throes of its own full-scale collapse that once it really starts picking up speed will dwarf the situation in Haiti. And America is much larger, much greater, so to speak, and much more entrenched in an illusion of peace, safety, which will make the fall that much bigger and more devastating. You see, here in the United States, we have been adding millions upon millions of extremely desperate people on top of the millions upon millions of extremely desperate people that we already have. And politicians in major cities like New York, Chicago, they openly admit that they can't possibly take any more because social services available for them have been completely overwhelmed. But more newcomers just keep coming anyways. We, we are creating an extremely explosive environment and... The pressure that is coming in 2024 and beyond that, honestly, could push things over the edge. Right, Pepper Girl? Yeah. And one of the one of the most prideful nations in the world, our soil, the US, and its populace generally seem to think that this is the shining city on the hill, right? And that we are immune to the types of social and financial breakdowns that occur elsewhere. We're too big to fail. We have that mentality. And it will contribute in a major way to this country's inevitability of undoing that. Okay. We have so much that is just piling and piling and piling on and pi and i speak on this stuff all the time we have this god awful ominous solar eclipse that's coming that will create an x marks the spot cross over america it passes over seven u.s towns marked nineveh nevea whatever which harkens back to the biblical story of Jonah. 
and the judgment that occurred due to widespread wickedness and unrepentance. But no one wants to hear about that. America is also in the throes of a financial collapse that the powers that be are desperately trying to avoid with a soft landing. But it's not going to work. It's going to be a hard landing. But no one wants to hear that. There comes a point when this Ponzi scheme known as a fractional reserve banking, you know, the Federal Reserve, and all the corruption that, that goes with it, reaches an unavoidable end. And it appears that the nation is just about there, unfortunately. What's going on at the border, the invasion, the attacks on our kids, the rampant lawlessness, pride, the unspeakable greed, these are all seven deadly sins, ma'am. All of this and more spells a soon end to the American empire, at least in its current form, I should say. And one could only wonder what will emerge from the ashes. Almost like a phoenix. Now, yeah, that's the one bird that will rise from the ashes. But what will emerge from the ashes of a ruinous heap that remains once all is said and done? American is the firstborn of old Israel that is going to be sacrificed like to the Pharaoh. You might want to buckle up, guys. We haven't seen anything yet. And what we are going to see I know people that are prepping for The rapture, you know. I know people that are prepping for the seven-year famine. I know people that are prepping for just about every reason you can possibly imagine. It's just, I guess it's just so hard to really wrap our brains around our new reality. I know it's very hard for me. And I think it's because this is what I do. I research and I read and I read and I read and I read. But if you really truly want to know what's going on, and I know you've probably heard this a million bajillion times, read your Bible. You know, funny thing is, is that I was just speaking to my nephew, Gavin, just tonight. And he said, Auntie, he said, I truly believe that we are living in the times of revelation. I said, yes, Gavin, I know we are. He said, every day that I wake up, he said, I'm just wondering what else is just going to smack us in the face. And he's right. What else is coming? What unforeseen bull is lurking around the corner? I don't know. And anyone who tells you that they know exactly what's coming, they're lying. Nobody knows. Nobody. Unless, of course, they're in on it. Hmm. But that's all I got for right now, guys. I got a lot to do. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next one. You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping. And I know sometimes it's hard, but it's the truth. We have to, we have to dive into it pretty much head first and make sure that we're all prepared. And prepared in our mind, prepared in our soul, prepared in our hearts prepared 
financially prepared with food and water and supplies to make sure we can get through this. And I know I say fear less a lot. But you have to. Because otherwise, none of us are going to make it out. None of us. You can be fearless all you want, but you have to fear less. You have to. Before I go, you know, there's a story that I have to tell you. When my son was in the, was in the Marine Corps boot camp, not too long ago, a lot of you were with me still then, he was going through one of these <laughs> obstacle course things that he had to go through. He had to go up this wall and he had to climb down and he's very afraid of heights. And every letter that I wrote to him, I said, son, fear less. And he wrote me a letter and he said, mom, he said, I accomplished it. And he said, and I just kept saying to myself over and over again, fear less. Fear less, fear less. And he did it. He got down that 20 foot wall. He got up that 20 foot wall because they had to keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And he said, The only reason why I was able to accomplish it, he said, It wasn't because of my drill sergeant screaming at him. He said, It's because I screamed at myself, fear less. Fear less, fear less. It works. It works. And with that, I leave you adieu. Okay. Ciao.